This is an interesting way of looking at effectiveness uh, through retrospective claims analysis because it, uh, it's prone to a lot of variables that may affect outcomes. But nevertheless, it is a mechanism that actually the insurance industry does look at a lot. So it's important for us to be aware of the data. Um, and in this study, um, what they did is they looked at a claims analysis comparing hospitalization rates for parampanol and for leucosamide. Now, for the reason for them looking at both is any time you try something new, um, it, does, it, it, it causes what is called active management. So you're more involved in the patient, you're more, discuss, more involved discussing side effects, effectiveness, and just that active management sometimes affects outcome. And this way, by uh, comparing parampanol to another effective anti-epileptic drug, uh, such as leucosamide, it really creates a level playing field that takes out the bias of active management. Um, and taking into account the variables that we did discuss, uh, uh, for both the cosamide and parampanol, there was a, a meaningful reduction in epilepsy-related hospitalization rates following the initiation of either parampanol and lacosamide, with parampanol being more effective than lacosamide. But nevertheless, a, a gratifying result for both medications. Yeah, there are data that can't be obtained from a typical clinical trial involving a few hundred patients that you may be able to uh, obtain from large national databases. And uh, we're particularly interested in patterns of anti-epileptic drug use and how they work out in terms of uh, real world use of these uh, drugs. So we use something called a Symphony database, which um, encompasses about 280 million lives per year of the United States. And it's a claims database. Data is put in by hospitals, by physicians, by pharmacies, and so forth. Um, so we use that to uh, look at the use of two uh, relatively new anti-epileptic drugs, lacosamide and parampanel. And since you can't get uh, data on actual seizure occurrence from these databases, we uh, used a proxy, which was hospitalizations, with the idea that people had more hospitalizations, probably had poor seizure control. That's something that's commonly used in, in this type of study. Um, so we, um, we looked at all patients who were prescribed one or the other of these drugs over a two-year period from 2014 to 2016, and then we, uh, we matched groups between the two drugs on comorbidities, age, other things like that. And then we looked at how frequently they were admitted to the hospital uh, over the next year. And that gave us a, uh, a proxy for comparing the uh, effect of the, the drugs on hospitalization rates and, and presumably um, uh, control of epilepsy. Well, the results were that um, starting a new drug is a good thing to do. Uh, if people are having uncontrolled seizures, uh, starting doing something rather than nothing is always a good idea. And both drugs reduce the propensity for hospitalization over the next year. Um, this is one of the only studies to compare two drugs head to head in this kind of situation. And we found that the uh, parampanel addition did a little better than the lacosamide addition. Uh, the difference was not huge. It was uh, for people who'd had a previous hospitalization in the, in the year prior, these presumably were the sicker patients, um, uh, the uh, parampanel reduced the chance of another hospitalization by about half and the leucosamide by about 40%. So there's about a 10% difference, but it was statistically significant. 